So our next speaker is Phil Brown, uh, Julia's colleague. Um, Phil Brown is a university distinguished professor of sociology and health science at Northeastern University, where he directs the Social Science Environmental Health Research Institute. And he also directs uh, its PFAS project lab, which has grants from NSF uh, to study social policy and activism concerning PFAS. He's also funded by NIEHS to study children's immune responses to PFAS and community response to contamination, and also um, to work with his colleagues to build this uh, nationwide report back and information exchange. He also directs an NIEHS T32, which is a training grant entitled Transdisciplinary Training at the Intersection of Environmental Health and Social Science. He also leads the Community Outreach and Translation Corps of Northeastern Children's Environmental Health Center. Um, and he is also uh, the Research Translation Director and Community Engagement Corps Co-Director um, for the Superfund uh, program there. He is a past member of NIEHS Council, and he has numerous books entitled No Safe Place, Toxic Waste, Leukemia, and Community Action, Toxic Exposures, Congested Illness and Environmental Health in the Environmental Health Movement, and uh, Contested Illnesses, Citizen Science and Health Social Movements. Uh, Dr. Brown earned his PhD in sociology uh, from, from Brandestis University. All right, well, uh, thanks for the great work of this committee. And uh, just in gathering this data together, not just in gathering the data together, but in providing a vehicle for the affected residents and their science allies to improve existing and build new relationships. Medical guidance has always been very problematic and driven uh, by a lot of conflict. Ibsen's doctor was fired and harassed for telling the truth about contamination in that town's famous baths. AIDS activists demanded overall disease recognition and participation of sufferers in quick clinical trials that included people using other treatments. Breast cancer activists fought against unscientific treatment, won coverage for screening, and alerted the world to environmental factors as a cause. And from Love Canal on, toxics activists brought lay participation in research and medical guidance into the mainstream. And in Love Canal case, that guidance was even literally to evacuate. The most ordinary elements of medical research today have been driven by women's health activists pushing against the exclusion of women from clinical trials. As you see in this familiar graph of the inclusion table, as Steve Epstein wrote so wonderfully about in his book, Inclusion. Well, you know that this committee has heard over this set of marvelous meetings over and over again from community members that they want blood testing and they want medical monitoring and screening. And so that's really the thing that our team is doing and that I'm gonna focus on. And this is the PFAS REACH project. Do you see here the list of the participant groups? Uh, Laurel Shader, who you've heard from already, uh, is the main uh, PI in this. and you see a number of community groups as well as our scientific uh, partner groups. And I will not, in this case, read the list of all the affiliated researchers. And likewise, I won't do that for the Science Advisory Board. But just so you can see that these are people whose names uh, are familiar probably to many of you. Now, also, as you see, it takes a lot of people, in this case, a team of 16 people to put together these documents that I'm going to show you. And I'm uh, going to give a special shout out to Martha Powers, who is an environmental epidemiologist here, uh, who has been steering this process through. It's been a very long goal, um, a long process that took a year, and we wanted to provide community members and clinicians with information about the types of tests that would be appropriate to consider, as well as just to give basic information about what PFAS are, where they come from, and how we can reduce exposure. We got guidance from the C8 medical monitoring program that you heard a lot about from Dr. Baker. We got input from our community partners in our PFAS REACH project. We learned from affected communities all around the world how they were dealing with this. We had many discussions with physicians and scientists on our own board. We analyzed weaknesses in ATSDR medical guidance and in some state guidances. We had a lot of iterative feedback over and over again. We brought these to our partners and said, does this make sense? Is this easy to read? And we uh, finally posted this to the website just a few weeks ago. Uh, we were working also on some other documents 
in progress. Uh, one will be a blood testing document that will include where to find information uh, on labs that do testing. And then we will also have uh, a vaccine document as well. And these are available here on the pfasexchange.org website. These are literal screenshots of what they look like. Uh, as I said, there are two different ones. This is the one for the residents in the PFAS impacted communities, and it provides a rundown of a lot of important information that they need to know. And this is the version for clinicians. And in this case, you see uh, there are guidance both for adult patients and for pediatric patients on the kinds of laboratory tests and clinical examinations and counseling topics that people should consider. As I mentioned, we have in progress a document, hopefully in the next few weeks, available on blood testing, and that will tell people what they can and cannot learn from a blood test, and there'll be a list of labs that offer that. They'll also be frequently asked questions. And of course, we have a tool on the PFAS Exchange website where anybody, even if they are not in our PFAS REACH study, can input their own data from either blood or from water and find out how they look against other benchmarks, whether that be NHANES or uh, state level or research uh, level data. And then the vaccine uh, document that we're working on will tell people some questions that they're concerned about. Uh, we know that children's uh, responses to the DTaP vaccine are diminished when they have higher PFAS exposure. So this led our community members to raise the question to us, well, what's that gonna mean for uh, our immune response to the COVID virus itself, to the coronavirus? And what is that gonna mean in terms of the effectiveness of vaccines? So these are a lot of questions that we've also been dealing with. How do we disseminate all these documents? We will be disseminating them through the Pediatric Environmental Health Specialty Units. You've heard from a number of those folks and some of them have been involved in helping put this together. Activist groups around the country, of which there are many dozens of them, will be disseminating these documents. We will be sending these to health professional organizations, to PFAS reach centers, such as the STEEP Center and the North Carolina State Center, which are the only two super fund centers that are dedicated to PFAS. We'll share this with state and federal agencies. We'll share this, as we have already, uh, a lot of our work with national organizations. So the American Association for the Advancement of Science through their Epi Center project has initiated a wonderful series of workshops with the Environmental Council of the States, with the Association of State and Territorial Health Organizations, National Governance Association. Uh, we've presented there and those folks will be sharing documents. And we'll also be sharing this through the Interstate Technology and Regulatory Council, which is a very important source of information for a state and local governments. Uh, we're doing a presentation coming up very soon, the, uh, later this month uh, at the International Society for Exposure Science. We published an article recently in Environment Health News above the fold, and I'll show you that. And we of course hope that this committee and those of you listening in will be doing a lot of that work as well, helping us to circulate these documents. This is a screenshot of the article that was in Environmental Health News at the end of June. Uh, just a very brief uh, look at what we were trying to do here. And here's a great example of how the guidance documents are being used. And this is a, a very hot off the press development. Uh, some of you, uh, if you've been listening to all these sessions, will have heard from Aisha Khan and Jamie Honkawa from the Nantucket PFAS Action Group. And they decided that they would set up a presentation to the Nantucket Health Department and to the Nantucket College Hos Cottage Hospital, the only hospital on the island. And we had a planning meeting last week, and we will be organizing a session in September, which we then hope that we'll be able to provide uh, that to many other similar locations around the country. Related to this is, uh, as you know, there are community liaisons, 41 of us, and every single one of us signed this letter that we spent a lot of time composing, in which we talk about why this kind of medical guidance is necessary and why blood testing and more uh, water testing is necessary and why we need to do more education of health professionals. So that letter um, has been submitted and there's another letter that's coming in from uh, people who are not officially liaisons but are in the environmental health and justice community. And they are then sharing that uh, 
they're reading our letter and, and signing on to this. So we hope that that will be sent in um, by the end of this week. We gave it a little bit of extra time because uh, everybody was away on vacation in August, except those of you who are here today. Um, I also want to remind you that there's uh, a couple other interesting letters. Cancer Free Economy Network submitted a letter, and there's another letter from the health professionals concerned about PFAS that includes not just physicians and nurses, but a whole range of other health providers. So thank you very much for your time, and I do hope that you all will help to distribute this.